Welcome to the Holland Financial Report. It is Monday, March 20th, and I'm joined, of course, by Robert Marr, our Vice President of Investments. Welcome, Robert. Good morning, David. All right, lots to talk about. Of course, in the news are the banks, but first, we're going to talk real quick about the market. Uh, Robert spends all day in the market, so he lets me do a quick summary. Uh, year to date, Dow Jones Industrial averages down almost 4%. S&P 500 up 2% and NASDAQ up 11%. Those are year-to-date numbers. Of course, we're still, we're still I won't say um, reeling, but so, of course, still seeing those negative numbers year over year, but um, year-to-date improvement. So we'll take that. Uh, absolutely. All right, excellent. So let's talk about banking. Of course, the um, Silicon Valley Bank and what was the other bank? Uh, the other bank was Signature Bank. Signature Bank. Uh, but especially Silicon Valley Bank, uh, it's sucking up and gobbling up all of the headlines and, and a lot of the media, financial world focusing on that. So we want to spend a few minutes talking about it, but go a little deeper in terms of what's going on and why. So um, the, the big picture, of course, Robert, as you know, this, these two banks basically went under. Uh, they have been taken over by the FDIC. Yes. Okay. And so what does that mean? That means when instead of a bank completely failing and the depositors losing all of their money, the FDIC comes in, takes over the bank, they go into receivership um, so that the bank is closed, it's no longer trading on the stock exchange, um, but the FDIC is now controlling it instead of the bank's chief executive officer and the board of directors. So the stockholders of the bank have lost their money? Yes. Okay. But the depositors... They still are, quote unquote, insured by the FDIC up to the appropriate limit. Correct. So, and then is it likely, usually what happens in these situations, the, the FDIC will kind of stabilize the situation and then will find another bank to take over that bank? Eventually, yes. Okay. Sometimes so, they'll completely close it, but usually they'll find another bank to pick up the assets. Yes. Okay, excellent. So then with this particular situation, and I think this is a, a, a great um, kind of uh, educational opportunity for everybody, is, and it's, and it's a little bit of a rhetorical, but I'd, I'd love to have you share, Robert, is, is this a, these bank failures, is this indicative of poor management, bad behavior, lack of preparation, some other fault with the specific banks involved, or is it more of a global issue in terms of the economy or just the reality of a changing interest rate environment? Is it all three? Uh, share with us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's not indicative, uh, it, although some people and headlines may want to convince you otherwise, but it's not indicative that the global economy or the U.S. economy is, you know, on fire and horrifically going to crash within the next one or two months. This is more of a specific, a few banks um, making very bad decisions, uh, and as a result, or um, making bad decisions, um, and the rising interest rate environment that we are in, that's happened in the past year, really showing how weak and mismanaged some of these banks have become. Excellent. So specifically then on... Silicon Valley Bank, they, uh, I, I, of course, we, we all read, the, you know, what's happening with the news. And as this story has unfolded, some of the key things that went wrong there is they didn't have a chief risk officer. For over eight months, from April 29th to um, January 4th. So for over eight months, they did not have a chief risk officer. And banks are in the risk management business. So that's a major flaw or, or problem. And then the thing that really got them, and I'd love for you to share a little bit about this, Robert, is that they had a mismatch of the what they were doing with depositors' money in terms of either lending it out or buying uh, you know, other forms of debt or treasury bills and notes, that they had a problem there. So explain a little bit about what happened. All right. It's, um, it, it's a pretty simple concept. Um, when people deposit money with a bank, they invest in different securities. They invested in long-term treasuries. But as we know, the last one year, 
What happened to interest rates? The Fed hiked interest rates from near zero bound to 4.75%. And that, again, it's, I can't stress this enough, that happened very quickly. Let's not forget four 75 basis point increases in a row. So when interest rates skyrocket, bond prices go down. Well, when depositors want some of their money back, well, they have to sell these treasuries and they have to sell them at a loss to honor the redemption request. So they lost a lot of money. Word got out that they lost a lot of money and thus the bank run on yeah, the that run bank on the bank. Happened. Yes. So the, um, the math works basically that if you have a 10 year bond um, or note uh, more specifically and interest rates go up 1%, roughly your 10-year note, if you have to sell it, it's fallen by 10% in value for a 1% increase in interest rates. Now, the shorter the note, the less of the effect, the longer, the more of the effect. So what's really remarkable, Robert, is that, that, that we talk about the chief risk officer. I want to know what the chief investment officer was doing. Um, I mean, were they asleep at the wheel? That, that's really remarkable. You would think they would have created more liquidity and started trying to mitigate um, or minimize the damage that was being done by the devaluation of their bond portfolio. Well, more than maybe a year and a half ago, we were still in the, okay, inflation is only transitory, but as the Fed started saying, maybe it's not, and then they hiked, they should have looked at their portfolio and say, okay, where are things going? And perhaps made some changes, but they did not just 10, they did long-term treasuries, and uh, that's really what bit them the last few months, which just finally came to light. Okay, very good. So that, that is in a, a nutshell, what happened with this particular bank. Um, now let's go a little bit back uh, more globally, Robert, if we could talk, you mentioned uh, where we are with the federal um, rates for the federal fund rate, the discount rate um, is at 475. 4.75, and that rate, of course, is used by banks as a benchmark to then what will they lend out at? You know, they take that and add about 3%, and that's the prime lending rate. So it's a big deal, um, as we see, and it permeates our economy. So where are we with regard to expectations for the Federal Reserve changing that interest rate at the next meeting? Well, I mentioned that um, Silicon Valley bank fiasco, it was closed 10 days ago. Um, on March 10th. Uh, believe it or not, before that happened, there were expectations. Jerome Powell was in front of Congress, you know, talking, you know, we really still have to fight inflation. Inflation is strong. The, the chances for a 50 half percent rate hike was about 70, 75 percent. This happened with Silicon Valley Bank. It went down to Fed will pause, which is why you know, tech stocks did very well. Uh, but now we're at currently about, let me see, I believe a 66% chance back to a 25 basis point rate hike. So, and that hap that's happening in two days. The Fed meets Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. Wednesday is the rate decision. And right now, the majority of the probability is that it will go, the federal funds rate will go from 475 to 5%. So we had a big swing. We had the expectation was a half a percent increase was mo more likely than not. Then it went the other way back to maybe even talk of a possible rate cut. Mm -hmm. And then we're back to a more modest rate increase being the most likely pro probable outcome a lot of volatility the last two weeks in, in that market. Well, of course, this is a nice, easy opportunity to remind everybody about the dangers of trying to time the market and uh, not only the stock market, but the bond market and, and what's happening there. So, um, all right, any, anything else we wanna add in to this, Robert, in terms of people looking at this as an opportunity to invest or maybe overweight or underweight or maybe adjust their portfolios? Well, Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, the two that were taken over by the FDIC are regional banks. Um, regional banks have gotten hammered and they're more mid and small cap. So last week, large caps went up about 1.3, 1.4%. Small and mid caps declined 3%, over 3%. Um, so it may be a good time. Uh, what did Warren Buffett say? You know, when everybody's fearful, be greedy. When everybody's greedy, be fearful. A lot of people are fearful right now. I know it's tough. Why would you go into a regional bank, you know, ETF or mutual fund? Perhaps now is a really good time. 
um, professionally and personally. I believe regional banks have been hit hard. Um, I think um, there's been an overreaction and a lot of selling pressure on those stocks. It might be Again, and I know this is your line, but I'm going to co-opt it from you that no, you don't go all in right. on one particular sector, subsector, but it may be a good opportunity to increase an allocation to these banks that have been hit so hard. Yeah, I like that, Robert. Well, and, and to uh, piggyback off of uh, Robert quoting Warren Buffett, I love another quote from Warren Buffett, and, and it plays, uh, applies very well to this situation with regard to these banks. And it, it goes something like, when the tide goes out, you see who's been swimming naked. <laughs> so, and so the point of that is that um, you know, the banking industry, um, the financial sector, it's not crumbling. Um, what we have is a changing interest rate environment. We have companies adapting to an aggressive Fed policy that is now maybe probably starting to ease up a little. And you had a bank that wasn't prepared. They got caught uh, with their shorts down. Let's just call it like that. So they got in trouble because of the changing environment. And so, you know, when things are, you know, there's an old saying that, you know, when the market's doing really well, you know, a chimpanzee can, you know, pick stocks that are going to win. Um, so yes. there is a reality of the dynamics of what's happening in the market. And there's a lot going on. And you've heard us talk about that on these reports. So I think what we've seen here is that played out that, you know, you, you need to be careful. Robert said it, and I'll reinforce it. We've got to stay diversified. We don't want to go into all into one thing or even load up on bank stocks, um, you know, as a strategy to say, okay, well, you know, gosh, I'm still down. You know, I'm the NASDAQ still is down 16% year to date, Robert. I need to roll the dice and make that up. Well, uh, that's, that is truly is rolling the dice and gambling. Right, exactly. All right, final thoughts? Um, you know what? You usually say this about me, David, but I'll say this about you and what you just said. I can have said it any better. You know, right. I mean, um, yeah, stay diversified. And uh, the, a few bad actors are causing a lot of anxiety in the markets right now. Um, and uh, steps are being taken to contain that. Um, and people have to keep that in mind. Absolutely. Well, and that's why we're here and that's why we do this. And if you um, heed some of those uh, good observations, then you will be able to plan stronger.